Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. So we're doing some more South African wines. Uh, we're only going to do two wines, no Wine 101 today because we already did all that. Um, and I'm also a little bit pressed for time. Go Spurs, go! Though when you see this episode, we should be in the middle of the finals. And I'm just going to say it right now, Spurs are going to Spurs are going to be in the finals and we're going to win it. Even if we go seven games, we got home court. I don't care who we play. We're probably going to play Miami because they were... Pretty darn good the other night, um, or they, you know, they were sorry. They've been pretty good in the Eastern Conference Finals. That we're recording this on Thursday, May 29th. So Spurs are playing Game Five tonight at home. I watched uh, the Miami Indiana game last night, and uh, couldn't believe Indiana pulled it off. I mean, LeBron had five fouls into the third quarter, so he didn't play a lot. So Indiana should have won, but. It wasn't a convincing win. They, they, they got away with one, honestly. They really did. They should have lost how they played. But you know what? A win's a win. They all look the same. doesn't matter if it's by one point or by 50 points. So um, only to, only, the only, only place that the, the score kind of matters is soccer and hockey because you have goal differential. But anyway, um, so let's get into some, some uh, more South African wines. Now, these are a step above, uh, at least in price and supposedly quality, uh, from what the other two I had. Not that the other two I had were bad wines, but these are going to be higher quality wines. Uh, they were sent to me, so I didn't pay for them. Um, so uh, somebody that, that uh, I have uh, connected with in the social media world has uh, uh, sent these to me because he asked me if I knew anything about South African wine or how much I'd had of it. And hopefully when you watched last episode, I, uh, he, gave, he gives me some compliments that I didn't butcher the names too badly. Um, I mean, we know that sometimes the foreign languages I'm, I'm really bad, but you know, sometimes at work I surprise myself because I actually spend a couple seconds, think about the word, say it, say it correctly. So I did it the other day at work. I was um, talking about a particular wine area of France and I was surprised. I actually pronounced it halfway decently and I didn't butcher it. But then I told them what the butchered name was. Anyway, so. All right, so what we're we gonna have? We're gonna have a uh, some wines from the Tokara Winery in South Africa. Now, the the name Tokara comes from the owner's kids, Thomas and Kara. I don't know, maybe it's Tokara, maybe it's Thomas and Kara. So that's it's, hey, either way, Tokara, Tokara. I would say Tokara because it just sounds better, but maybe it is Tokara. I don't know. Um, they're situated on the crest of the Helschgut. Hel, no, sorry, Helschgut. Pass, H E L S H O O G T E. So I got Schucht, Hells, Hellschucht Pass. Man, all you South Africans out there and Dutch can laugh. All right. Um, it's about five kilometers from the historic winemaking town of Stellenbosch. So we remember where Stellenbosch is, or at least we remember hearing about it. Um, they, uh, I say apart from award-winning architecture, so I guess the place is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty cool looking. Uh, it offers magnificent vistas of the Simonsburg Mountains, False Bay, Table Mountain, and Lush Itis Valley. All right, um, so let's kind of talk about because we're, we're going to talk about the wine a little bit. I want to give background of the winery. Um, they strive, they strive to create a balance between the vegetative and reproductive qualities of the vine, uh, which is beneficial to the, both the environment and quality of the state's final product. Uh, they try to be very tech, you know, they try to use technology um, to ensure excellence. And uh, premium wines are made from the top quality grapes exclusively from our own vineyards. And uh, so as a result, a specific sense of place finds expression in the complexity and richness of their wines, balanced texture, elegance, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So three, priming, three prime farming locations for their grapes. 
man, this seems like it's a little bit getting a little dark, but it should be good. I don't know. I'll brighten it up in the, in post. Um, so, um, they're each situated in some of the Western Cape's best cool climate viticultural districts. Uh, the first is a 60-hectare 60 combination of properties in and around the actual winery. Um, this is the home vineyard on the southern slopes of the Simonsburg Mountain. I'm sorry. This home vineyard area on the southern slopes of the Simonsburg Mountain harvests exceptional examples of the grapes they do. They have what's called the Highlands Farm in Elgin or Elgin. Kind of depends on how you pronounce it. Uh, and the Siberia property in the Himmel and Ard Valley near Hermanus. Okay. So a little background of that. So let's get into these wines. Man, this is really, really dark. So we're going to try to do something on the fly here. See if it lets me do it. Nope, it won't. So too bad. So sad. We'll just have to brighten it up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's get into the Tokara. Director's Reserve White. This is the 2011. I already rinsed it out with some water, so I don't have to do a rinsey rinse. Oh, sorry, Gary. All right, uh, wine of origin, Stellenbosch. Uh, this is a propri propri proprietary blend dry white table wine. Um, it is retails anywhere between 36 and, well, it says 36, $37, so around 40 bucks retail. Uh, it's a blend of 71% Semillon and 29% Sauvignon Blanc. It's barrel fermented and aged in oak for nine months. Um, get, we're not going to talk, we're not going to read the rest of the uh, stuff there. Ooh, this is kind of, kind of cool. You know what? This is really bugging me. I'm going to, I'm going to brighten these lights up a little bit. Just because it's really getting dark. And I'm not liking that. This also tells me that these lights are about to fade out on me. Now, hopefully I didn't brighten it too much. And I look all washed out. <sighs> all right. Well, it's a little bit better. Okay. So, um, see, I should have looked at it before I started. So, anyway, uh, Simeon Simeon Blanc. All right. And we got like this cacophony of aromas. I was going to use the word symphony, but kind of a cacophony because you got these aromas that are all just screaming to be, to be smelled and like me noticed, you know? So I mean, definitely some melon and melon rind and not that melon rind I was talking about with the other wine was like that the outside was more at the inside like like ripe melon like you left it out for left it out for a few hours and you get that you can really smell the cantaloupe um, type of thing but honestly there's there, there's kind of like it's gonna sound gross cat peed inside of a cut cantaloupe there, there is that little bit of Sauvignon Blanc, typical, you know, cat pee type of aroma and, and cantaloupe type of aroma. Um, not a whole bunch of other citrus type of, um, or fruit type of aromas. But I just kind of, I kind of like it. I like because it's different and interesting. That's, that's what I gravitate towards. Yeah, it's kind of cool. There's other stuff going in there, but I, I guess I'm just so focused on the other. And I don't know. I mean, I would say some floral, but almost, again, like the flowers have been left out for a little while. And I, I don't know. I, I've never smelled decaying flowers, okay? There's a sweetness to it, okay? I'll we'll just leave it at that. Mm. 
so you know how asparagus can be one of those vegetables that's difficult to pair with wine? You could pair this with asparagus. It actually has a vegetal quality to it, similar to asparagus. Um, but it's like, uh, okay, so I worked in a Chinese restaurant for a year. And, I, and that's where I actually grew to appreciate uh, American style Chinese food and actual true like, you know, native style cooking. Because if I was going to eat that night, I had to eat whatever they cooked. Sometimes they cooked what was on the menu, rarely. And other times it was kind of like, I mean, that's kind of weird looking. And not in a bad, I mean, it wasn't that bad, but just different to a Westerner, you know, you're kind of like, man, what is that? So they had this type of vegetable dish, and I almost want to say it was asparagus with this sauce on it. And I get that kind of flavor profile. It makes me feel like I'm back with the Lou's, back in high school, eating this this vegetable dish that has like this brownish type sauce that I love, that I grew to love. So this is not a, this is not a bad, this is not saying this is a bad thing, but it, it's similar to that. I'm excited. So far, I, I'm already gonna tell you that if you want something that's unique and different and is not like any other wine you've ever had from any other country, they talk about sense of place. I mean, I've never had a white wine that's like this. So it's, so that's going to tell me, hopefully, this is what a South African wine should taste like. Or at least this type of blend of grapes. And the, 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 the aromas are, are kind of mutating a little bit. There's almost like a smoky quality to it. Now for round two of the flavors. So all that stuff I just told you about, throw it away. Throw it away. It's not there. We're not there in bunches. Now we're getting into your citrusy, lemon, lime type of stuff. Um, very high acid, by the way, through this whole thing. High acid. I mean, this is a it's cool one. I mean, if you if you want, if you can spend 40 bucks on a bottle of wine, a white wine from South Africa, and you want to be I don't want to say blown away, but you want to be kind of like, wow, this is not like any other one I've ever had. You need to get this. You know, the Sauvignon Blanc seems like it's really taking over. All right, so I'm now I'm reading, I'm reading the rest of the description, so I didn't want to go too far. The nose just seems a little muffled. This is from the Wine Advocate, by the way, from 2000, October 2013. And this guy, Neil Martin, gave it a 93. Um, the, two grapes, the two grape varieties unable to decide who is in charge. Yeah. <laughs> the palate is nicely balanced with the semion more expressive at the moment, offering lovely notes of red apple, rose water, apricot, and quince. Maybe it's the quince I was getting. I don't know. I didn't get any apple. I saw I didn't get any apple. I honestly have never had rose water, so I don't know what it's like. An apricot, that might have been that might have been kind of like that that stone fruit, you know, or cantaloupe type of thing I was getting. Uh, the acid is is very well judged. Okay. Uh, and there is a convincing air of confidence in the finish. Excellent drink now till 2020. Sure. I'm going to try some more of this. See, I've gone a little long in this wine because we're only doing two wines. And I have 28 minutes to tip off. I still have to get food. And by the way, that was for the 2011, for the review, it wasn't for the 2012, which is what we're having now, right? 2012, 2012. It's pretty good. 
I say get some. Get you some of this if you find it. Can I didn't see this brand at Specs. Um, they may have it at other, you know, other uh, national chains or local or local chains, um, but definitely pretty good. It's fourteen percent alcohol, and I wouldn't really consider it a, a medium plus alcohol wine. So I don't know. It's kind of it's it's getting a little warm, so maybe. Anyway, uh, let's go into wine number two. All right, so let's get into the second wine here. Let me get through my pages. Um, let's talk about some winemakers. All right, so um, Miles Mossop and is a winemaker and. I, Aiden Morton is a viticulturist, so I'm going to try to go through this real quick so I don't take up too much time. Start the timer too. Uh, he's an alumnus, oh, I'm sorry, Miles is an alumnus of Weinberg Boys High School. Okay, double, blah, blah, blah. All right, so he graduated from Sillenbosch. He attained a degree in viticulture and enology in 98 and graduated top of his class. Outstanding. Uh, he also completed a geology and geochemis geochemistry degree in 1995. Wow. A student practical spell at Spice Route was followed by a stint with Giles Webb at the, uh, Thelema. Oh, the wineries. Okay. I'm like, Spice Route? What are you talking about? Uh, 99, he spent a vintage at the prestigious Napstein Winery in Clare, South, Al South Australia, and did a tasting stint in France. Um, so he's, he's been around. He joined Tokara in 2000, and he's done 12 harvests so far. And has recently been graduate, granted membership of the prestigious Cape Winemakers Guild. And he loves surfing, fishing, and wine in all its guises. All right, Aiden uh, also went to Stellenbosch, got a degree in viticulture and plant pathology, and played Mady's water polo. Oh, so I guess they have a water polo team. Um, let's see, blah, blah, blah. And he also majored in entomology. Uh, he was part of the South African Navy, got a job in Cinemillion at the Chateau Angelus, nice, in 92, as a seller hand uh, that sparked an interest in possible career in the wine industry, and decided to return to university to study further. Um, so I guess that's when he went to Stellenbosch. Uh, he also worked at Thelema uh, as a viticulturist for five years, and he went to, he got to, he moved to Tokara in 2001. So uh, his... Wine growing philosophy. Great wine growing begins with choosing the right sites on which to plant vineyards. And we'll go through the rest of this. It's also responsible for farming the olive groves. That's one thing about uh, wine. So uh, you'll find vineyards will have olive groves or they'll have apple orchards. Um, these are also a couple other um, uh, crops. Because, you know, remember, we have to remember this is a crop that we make some amazing juice out of. Uh, these two crops are also well suited in wine growing areas. All right, he likes hiking, sailing, bird watching, and mountain biking. All right, so let's get to the wine. It's kind of cool to meet these guys. I don't know when I'm going to make it to South Africa. I mean, I haven't even made it to Napa yet. I'm hoping to do that this year, by the way. Um, got Texom in August. I'm going to participate in the Texas Best Sommelier competition. Uh, whether I whether I win or not is not my goal, and my goal is to get some practice and kind of get a, a kick in the um, on my studies and to see where I'm at as far as the advanced degree is that I hope to take next year, or if I don't take it in 2015, do 2016. All right, so this is the 2010 Tokara Director's Reserve Red, and I'm trying to skip the tasting notes so I don't get into that. Um, trying to get what the grapes are it doesn't say it doesn't say come on man so um, I thought all the stuff was on here I apologize I me mean, I read through these but I thought it was maybe it's on the back label ah hi how you doing back label all right so Cabernet Sauvignon 72% Merlot, 15%, Petit Verdot, 10%, and that little grape that can, Malbec, 3%, is blended, matured in French oak for 22 months. 
All right, outstanding. All right, so let's check this out. So basically a cab Merlot blend. I think that's, I think that's the delivery. Hold on. Yep, but he left it at the door, so that's good. It wasn't wine this time. Yesterday the wine showed up. Oh yeah, I got a whole bunch of wine from a Wine Underground. So uh, we're gonna be reviewing that. I also got wine from Kaiken I got a review. I got, um, uh, what should we call it? Uh, Mr. Corona sending me some wine. I mean, I got a whole bunch of wine coming, man. We have a lot of wine for the summer. Let's put it that way. But I had it signed for the yesterday delivery. I didn't have to sign for that one. All right, so basically a Cab Merlot blend. See his UPS? I can't really see him, but he's, I can hear him over there. Okay, so again, another really cool smelling um, bouquet. So, red fruits. I, I could probably just sit and smell this for a while. So we're gonna try to get through this. Red fruits, vanilla. You know, obviously oak treatment here. You can smell the oak or the oak influence. Kind of creamy. And there was something at the very beginning though of that of that aroma that was like mostly that, but there's something and, and I it was fleeting. Like it, it it went away really quick, and that's why I was like, ooh. Now it's it's calmed down a little bit. It's still a nice nose. An interesting palette. Um, I can definitely get the the cab influence. I mean, I, I'm getting that that bell pepperish type of quality. It's not overwhelming. It's really subtle. Um, there's there's a red fruit pie type of thing. So we got the vanilla that almost not, almost not creamy, but kind of creamy. Um, I would say medium medium tannins. Um, I would say medium medium plus acid. You know, definitely some oak influence going on here. Really got to get that, that second pour into the glass here to really get going. Yeah, there's a little bit of savoriness to it now in the aroma. It's turned turned more, I would say earthy, but less less fruit forward on the nose now. So, oh, I didn't go how much this was. It's around forty to. Uh, 40 42 dollars retail which you've already seen in the lower third but all right so first of all i'm not as blown away as i am with the white and i think it's because i wasn't expecting what i got out of the white um the red is still good um i'm, I'm, I'm not as excited about it right and it's not that it's not that it's a bad wine um but it's a really a nice, I feel like I have to be more serious with it, I guess. You know what I mean? Um, it's a really nice little blend of these four grapes. I mean, I'm not an expert by any means in, in how each grape, especially when we're talking very small percentages like a Malbec, is going to influence a, influence a wine. In my opinion, if we didn't have the Malbec in it, I probably wouldn't notice. Okay, it probably tastes the same to me. 
So I don't really know what the Malbec is necessarily bringing to this wine in this glass, okay? I'm sure, I'm sure the winemaker knew what he was trying to do to it and probably saw that in the Malbec. Same thing with the Petit Verdot at 10%. Here's what I'm going to tell you. This doesn't taste like a California cab. It has some, <clears throat> a hint of old world cab, you know, Bordeaux basically. So we're talking, because it's Bordeaux blend. It uses four of the grapes in, in out of Bordeaux and it's Cabernet based, so, so it would be a left bank Bordeaux. And it kind of has that element to it, but it's still distinctive enough that, again, I would probably put it in the Bordeaux camp, but there would be something in the back of my head going, I don't, I'm not really sure about it, you know, that, that I'm in the right area of the world. But it'd be kind of like, I don't know what else it could be. And that's where drinking South African wine or drinking wine outside of the, the major areas is very critical in my advancement in the court. This is definitely a good quality wine. It's definitely a $40 bottle of wine. It's not, this is better than you're gonna get from um, your under 20 bottles. This is really in that, I would say above $20, 25, probably that 25 to $60 range of, of wine. It is definitely not, you know, a Bordeaux. It's definitely not a uh, uh, Napa Valley. Um, it's, it's definitely something that's unique. And if you want something that's different and tastes different, um, that's good, not like, you know, just, oh, I'm just drinking because it's South African, I'm trying to be, you know, hipster or something like that. Um, not that hipsters drink South African wines, I don't even know what kind of wines they drink. Um, probably still drink the Moscatos. But um, nothing wrong with them, they're sweet, they're nice and tasty, but they're the Moscato. 15% um, alcohol, it doesn't feel like it's really hot at all. Um, I would think it was 14% or 14 and a half and lower. You know, that, that bell pepper or that green pepper type of flavor is nice and present, but it's very subtle. It's not overpowering. Like that cat sometimes happens with cabs. And you know, I, I love it. So when it is overpowering, I love it, but it's really, it's nice and subtle. Um, the, it's a darker red fruits. Um, it, the, the oak is not overpowering by any means. It's really nice. I mean, it's it's a. I think it is a well balanced wine. I think it's a really nice balance of everything that you need in a wine, um, and I, I would totally recommend it. Um, now let's let's go over their tasting notes again. I tried to get away from this. Prunes. I didn't really get the prunes. So aroma, uh, prunes, cassis, black cherries, coca, cocoa, and mocha. Okay, dark berry fruit. So yeah, I got that. Um, Hints of oak, notes of cedar and fresh vanilla pots. Hey! Um, spice and cardamom, which I never had cardamom, or that I know of, I've never had, so I can't tell you. Um, dark cherries, for said the palate, dark cherries, because he's ripe prunes again. I only get the prunes. Um, dark chocolate, I guess. Tannins are broad and textured. Yes, they are textured. Um, was given wine advocate 92 points. I, I well, this yeah, that's a 2009 that we're I'm reading the uh, the rating. See, I'm surprised no one picks up on the on the green pepper, but some people are more sensitive sensitive to it than others. It's juicy. It's nice. You definitely have it with a nice steak. Um, you probably want at least a New York strip out of this um, to, so you can get some more marbling. Um, it probably won't overpower a filet, um, but um, nice peppercorn sauce, all that kind of stuff, you know. It's a nice wine. And, and it's, like I said, it's, it's, it's kind of elegant. It's kind of, it's balanced. It's, it's got a nice smoothness to it. It's 15%. You don't feel it. 
it's from South Africa. It tastes different than than most other Cab Merlot, Petit Verdot, Malbec blends I've ever had. If you find it, get it, man. I mean, it's it's not cheap. It's forty something dollars, but it's priced about right. I mean, I wouldn't. I mean, if if I was told this was a sixty dollar retail wine, I, I might be kind of like, eh, kind of high end, but still, you know, in that in that ballpark of of quality. Um, if you told me this was like you could get this for like thirty bucks a bottle, twenty five dollars a bottle, I'd be like, well, man, it's a steal. Yeah, that's good. Thirteen minutes to tip off. All right, so let's wrap this up. Uh, buy both these wines. I'm a more excited about the white wine, obviously. I mean, you can tell I was really animated about it. The red wine, I kind of like, kind of got a little serious, kind of brought it down a little bit. This is one of those wines I feel like I kind of want to, um, you know, that I want to uh, think about a little more, kind of experience it, you know, really enjoy it throughout the night and, uh, you know, pair it with some food, but some good stuff. All right, so um, that's going to wrap it up for tonight or for this episode. Uh, as always, thank you for stopping by. Click the links above to friend me up. Hit the link over here. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hit the link over here for um, donation. Hit that Backblaze uh, thing for the special for the offer and uh, for your backup because you honestly backing up is very good. Matter of fact, I had to re not from Backblaze. But I had to restore this because I was messing around. You know, I, I'm, I'm a geek and I like to screw around with my computers. So I sometimes screw things up. And I did. I had to restore it from my time machine backup. And I spent most of the day today recovering it and then also, again, tinkering with it. And then, of course, messing stuff up again. But that's how I learned how to fix stuff. So um, backups are critical. Besides having an on-site backup, online backing up is outstanding. And I highly recommend it. I've had to use it in the past. I uh, haven't used it in a while, but I have had to use online backup through various companies I've, I've uh, had accounts with. But Backblaze, I really like their, I, I like how it's integrated and it's unlimited and I can, I can attach an external drive to it. That's the key. Whereas some of the other places, you have to pay extra for that. All right, so that's going to do it. Um, as always, thank you for stopping by and we will see everyone again next time.